So the charged nature of clay minerals um, creates some interesting and unique physical properties of soils that are rich um, in them. Um, it means that some soils, uh, some clay-rich soils, um, over a certain range of water contents can exhibit a plastic behavior. Now, plasticity is when a material can change uh, shape, can deform um, at constant volume with little additional change in stress. Um, and the way we talk about it when we're talking about soils is through um, something called soil plasticity. And we know that soils at, um, at one uh, level of water content can ex uh, exhibit a solid behavior, a solid pa uh, particle behavior. Um, and if we increase the water content, so this is water content. So if we increase the water content, eventually they'll start behaving like a liquid. So they'll start flowing um, like a liquid. But there's some region in between that um, where they behave um, like a plastic. Now we define the transition, so the, it's a continuum between these. There's not actually a, a um, distinct transition between solid and plastic. Um, but we, we define these, um, these transition, transitions um, experimentally. Um, so the transition between a, a solid state and a plastic state is um, called the, the, uh, um, the plastic limit. And the, um, the transition between the plastic and the liquid uh, state is called the liquid limit. Uh, these are both water contents, so they're the water content um, at, that, at that limit. Now the reason why this, uh, this is important is that um, soils at the plastic limit can have almost 70 times more strength than the soils at the liquid limit. So understanding where a soil is within this um, within this range and understanding what that range is for the soil um, is really quite important. So we can de define the range at which um, uh, soils behave uh, plastic through something called the plasticity index. Um, now the plasticity index, I'll write it down here, um, is equal to, so plasticity index is IP here, is equal to the liquid limit minus the plastic limit. So we can see that um, soils with a higher plasticity index will have a much larger range that they exhibit this plastic behavior. Um, so, th so things like a, a kaolinite um, will have a, a lower plasticity index than a, a montmorillonite or a bentonite type clay. So we know that soils have a, a range of particle sizes. So it's important to normalize this, um, this uh, plasticity index um, for the uh, clay particle size fraction. And that defines something called the activity of the clay. So we can, um, if we take this, this IP um, plasticity index and we divide it by the percentage of the, the, the sample that's uh, less than two micrometers in diameter, what we're defining here is the activity of um, the, the clay. So this is activity. So we know that um, kaolinite, for instance, has an activity um, equal to something like 0 0.5. Uh, elite has an activity between 0 0.5 and 1. Uh, and something like a smectite has an activity of between 1 and 7. So depending on the clay um, mineralogy that you have within your soil, the size fraction uh, less than two um, micrometers will have a much different um, impact on the 
uh, plasticity index. So things like a SMEC type would be way more plastic than a kaolinite. So it's important to not only understand the particle size distribution or the amount of clay within the soil, the clay particle size, but also to know what, uh, what minerals or what clay minerals you have within your soil. So how do we define this plastic limit and liquid limit? Well, as I said, we do it experimentally. Um, so the liquid limit is, um, is defined through a cone penetration test. Um, so WL is cone penetration test. So how do we define this plastic limit and liquid limit? Well, like I said, we do it experimentally. Um, the liquid limit is done through something called a cone penetration test. And the plastic limit is done through rolling the uh, a a sample of the material into thread. So it's a thread rolling. Um, and I've put links to um, videos of these two techniques uh, on my website um, on the, uh, with a link um, below in the description. So to do take a look at those. Um, you'll probably realize when you're viewing them that the, the, in some ways the, the, uh, the techniques are very um, arbitrary. So a final thing that's useful to you um, uh, to know is um, where on this this uh, this scale between the plastic limit and the liquid limit does the soil um, currently reside? So if you take a sample of soil and you measure the water content, whereabouts is that sitting on this um, on this scale? Um, and that is uh, defined through the liquidity index. So if we um, the liquidity index we write as IL, and that's equal to the current water content or the natural water content of the soil um, minus the plastic limit divided by the plasticity index. And it really just says whereabouts on this scale um, is, the, is the current natural water content of the soil. And, and finally, the last thing to point out is that when you're, you start with a solid material and you add water, um, what you find that is that the, the volume also increases um, with water content. Um, an alternative way of thinking about that is if you decrease the water content, your material will shrink. So there's a, a limit to, um, uh, to that point where the material stops shrinking. And that's called the shrinkage limit. And that's usually lower than the, well, it's, it's always lower than the, the plastic limit. Um, and that's called the, the shrinkage limit. So that's an important uh, characteristic to understand, especially for soils that might um, dry out and, and move uh, past the, shrink, uh, the plastic limit.